I'm Jasmine Moradi, and you're listening to the Queens of Tech podcast, a podcast series about workplace role models, where I get the opportunity to ask 60 plus questions to female influencers about their journey into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. My vision with this podcast is to raise the workplace ecosystem for women in tech. My mission is to bridge the gap between schools and workplaces by highlighting female role models in STEM to encourage more young girls and women to unleash their full potential in these fields to reach top leadership roles. In this episode, I'm very excited to welcome my guest, Helena Samkva, founder and CEO of Globi. Hi, Helena. Hey. I'm very happy to have you joining us from Stockholm, Sweden today. How are you? I'm super thrilled to be on the podcast. I'm doing good. Well, it's an honor for me to have you here. So happy to hear. Now, let us dive into your journey into STEM. Hope you're ready for the Queens of Tech 60 plus questions. Let's wrap up with a few fun facts about you. How would you describe your personality in three hashtags? I would say curious, always curious to learn more things. Impatient, want things to happen quicker. And ocean lover, not sure if that's a personality, but really love everything that has to do with the ocean. How would you describe your life in three sentences? I would say that I'm very lucky. I get to really have amazing people around me, both in my private life and in my work life. I get to learn new things on a constant basis. Yeah, I get to truly work with my passion. What kind of music stimulates and motivates you the most? Hip-hop, rap, and R&B. I like all kinds of music, but it's something special with that niche. I even tried to start my own rap duo when I was 12. What is your personal motto? You can't know unless you tried. I like to push boundaries and challenge the status quo. What is your favorite book? Pippi Longstocking. Such an inspirational character and also an inspirational author. What is your favorite podcast? I actually don't listen to a lot of podcasts. Mac or PC? Mac all the way. PC is freaked me out. Say something interesting about you that most people don't know. I think most people see me as pretty extrovert, but with age, I've become slightly more introvert. I really need the balance of both. What is your hidden talent? I can open oysters super quickly. If you were going to write a book about your life, what would a title be? Don't let them tell you no. Great start, Telena. Now, let us dig deeper. Our childhood has an effect on our adulthood. Our early experiences shape our belief about ourselves, others, and the world. Now, I want to discover your childhood. Where did you grow up? I was born in Gothenburg, but I did grow up outside Malmö in a small town called Hellikem most of my childhood. What was your dream job as a child? Medical doctor, as my parents, or dog walker. What was your favorite subject in school? It was math at a pretty young age, and then I became really interested in social science and politics. What was your least favorite subject? It was tech. Back then, tech was pretty much only that you would light together two light bulbs to see if they would light up. And if they did, then you succeeded, and if they didn't, you didn't. That was tech back then, and I did not like that. What is the earliest member of technology and the arrival of the internet? I remember the arrival of the internet into our home. I think I was 11 and my first memory was that I was trying to stalk Nick Carter from the Baxter Boys online. Which were the three first technology gadgets you owned? Game Boy. I was attached to my Game Boy playing Super Mario. My mom bought me an extended screen because I was so playing it so much. The phone, but it was a plugged in phone before it became a mobile phone. And also owned one of those Tamagotchis and tried to keep it alive, but seldom happened. Who was your female role model growing up and why? I will go back to Pippi Longstocking Freak back then and still am. have her graffiti paintings in my home and yeah, she's a great inspiration. How do you think where you grew up and the school you went to and the generation you come from influence your education and career? It's definitely been part of it. I think growing up during the 90s, there was so much happening in technology. The whole world was transforming. I grew up in a pretty wealthy area, so there was a lot of access to technology, both in your classroom and in your house and your friends' houses. Both my family and my friends' families, we also traveled quite a lot. So you got to see the world at an early age, which was definitely part of influencing me starting a company with a global approach. Very interesting. Now, I'm going to read two quotes. First one, how does the universe expect me to choose a career path at 16? I can't even choose what I want for dinner. Second, Abraham Lincoln said, I quote, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So Helena, I want to know the choices behind your career path. What did you study at university? First of all, I'm going to say that there is a really good saying by Steve Jobs that it's hard to connect the dots 
looking forward, but you can often connect the dots looking backwards. And it's very much the case for me. I studied international business and entrepreneurship as a bachelor and as a master's, I studied international and disaster management with a focus on technology. For me, it became the combination that my bachelor was the entrepreneurship and how you start a global business. And the master was how do I apply that business? Running Globy today, which is a global drone company and doing a lot within disaster and incident response. It's really the combination of those two worlds. But when I was going through my educational journey, I had no idea that this was going to be the end result of that, basically. Who and what influenced you to get into your choice and field? It was really to connect the dot between my different interests and my different areas of knowledge. I like to fly drones for fun in my free time. And then I worked as a management consultant and also using my educational background on bringing innovation into different forms to solve global challenges. The drone, which was my hobby and my career path, which was aiming to solve global challenges with innovation. That was really the connection of my personal interest and my choice and career path. Based on that, what professional roles have you had before that led you to start your own company? I've actually done a, quite a few different things. The one thing in common that they all have is that it's been a focus on digital platforms in one way or another. But I've been in finance, I've been working in marketing, I've been working as a management consultant. But the one thing in common that it's been always surrounding a digital platform and innovation and technology has been present in one form or another. What does Globy do and what is your title? Globy is a global drone data platform. We collect image data from drones in 125 countries and connect that with end users, like big organizations and companies who need to be able to understand the world so that they can take action. And I am the founder and the CEO of Globy. Why did you start the company and what is your main responsibility? I started Globy because I saw unutilized potential in drones as a technology. When I started Globy, there was no platform out there where you could make customized order from all the drones in the world. I wanted to change that. So I wanted to make sure that drones could be used to help combat global challenges. And that was the motivation factor behind Globy. In fact, Globy is short for global health. The global health challenges is very much the core of some of the challenges that we are part of solving. And then it's very much still a key driver behind everything that we do. My responsibility is mostly to make sure that each manager and each division of the company have the support that they need for me and to keep driving the company mission and vision forward to inspire the entire team to go that extra mile so that we truly become the number one solution for drone data in the world and that we also truly are a big player in creating social impact around the world. What does a typical work day look like for you? can be very different. That is what I like about my job. It's really no typical work day. It can be everything from a recording podcast to this and having media interviews to sometimes be on the ground in a rural area in Africa, visiting some of our projects that we have for the United Nations with some of our local drone operators in place or being on stage at a big tech event somewhere or just doing admin work. It's a lot of everything. And that's a big contrast at times. And that's what I really like. I love the quote, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. So Helena, what do you love about your role? It is very much that no day is the other day alike. I would not say that I really truly enjoy the different type of people that you meet. I get to meet so many different people from so many different countries in the world. Globy is today present in 125 countries through our local drone operators. And you also get to work with clients from a wide range of countries and a wide range of different clients from different sectors. You get to meet so many different people and you get to learn so many new things on a constant basis. It's hard not to love my job. What is the best experience you have had in your role so far? Any examples? The best experience I would say relates to when my small idea from the company where I was like, can you use drones like this? And can you create this global platform that would truly help make a difference around the world? And my dream client was the United Nations. I want to be able to be the drone data provider for the UN and make sure that they get to tackle challenges surrounding global health and environment, natural disasters with the help through data from Globy. And a few years ago that came true. Yeah, that is to date still one of my absolute favorite moments of my journey with Inglobi. And what is the biggest challenge you've encountered so far and how did you tackle that? Lots of challenges. I think anyone who tells you differently, they're lying. There might be a few exceptions to that rule, but I think there are very few, if even existing. The biggest challenge is persistence. Things take much longer to change and create scale. So that is the biggest challenge. You really need to be persistent and you need to keep the passion and motivation and the bigger goal than just a company and stay true to that. You motivate yourself and your team members to keep going when things are hard. And once you succeed, it's so worth it. What do you wish everybody understood about your role? 
I think it would be good for people to know that it's not so glamorous necessarily as being portrayed in the Netflix series. It's a lot of hard work behind it. And it's many years of non-glamorous lifestyle until things hopefully and eventually start to look better. And things are very different now compared to the first years of Lobby, but there are still a lot of challenges and it's definitely not as glamorous as many of the TV shows portrays it to be. What is the one common myth about your profession or field that you want to disapprove? One of the things I would say is that a lot of people think that you have to have a background in tech to be able to work in tech. And I would say it's everything but true. Globy is not started from someone who has a significant tech background. And I know of many other tech companies where the big innovations and the big changes are actually coming from sectors outside of tech, but tech becomes a component that you utilize to implement it and scale it. So think that you can not work in tech if you don't have a tech background. That is something that I wish more people would become aware of. And what do you love about working in the tech industry? The potential tech is truly the tool to scale something, to make something big, to achieve that impact. You can be global from day one, which Globy was, and you grow so quickly, you can make such a big difference with the health technology. Oprah Murphy said, I quote, think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is not a stepping stone to greatness. So Helena, what have by far been your biggest achievement in your career? Well, I think the biggest achievement to some extent is to have the ability to not give up. And when things are tough, to pick yourself up, try again type of attitude and to really be able to find a great team. I'm not neutral in the question, but I personally think I have the best team and to be able to work with a team like that and carry my small idea and vision forward together as a unified team and together with our crowd owners around the world has really created that huge global movement of crowd owners today in, in over 125 countries now spreading this small idea and that data from drones can have a significant difference on the outcome for our planet. To be part of that transformation has been extremely fascinating and continues to be. What is the biggest fact that has helped you become successful? Any success habits? I hate losing. I beat anyone who's been playing card games or anything with me. I just hate losing at anything and I don't give up. So I think that is my success habit that I don't see failure as failure. I just try to take on the challenge in a different form and until it gets solved. How do you measure your own performance at work? I have the same measurement towards myself as I have to my team members. We use KPIs and we have core legals that, that we aim to meet and I have them myself. What is the biggest failure in your career and what did you learn from it? Probably not pivoting fast enough. It's so hard that you start off with an original idea that you are very fond of and you think that just because it's a good idea, it's going to scale and become a successful business. And then you implement it and you learn that you have to make some tweaks and changes for it to truly scale and become a successful business. And that was definitely the case at Globy as well. And I think that there were signs that a pivot would have been the best thing to do way before we did pivot. So way before we changed our journey and our business models. What is inspiring and motivating you the most in your role and career right now? I love that the world has become so virtual. I love that you can do so much in a virtual setting. We hire team members from anywhere in the world. You can truly hire based on competence, not where the team members are located. We send out drones anywhere in the world with clicks through our platform, matching with local drone operators in those countries. It's fascinating to live in such a virtual world where the world is so easily accessible and where you can use technology to really try to impact the course of our our world and our planet through digital means and in our case through our platform getting data from multiple places every day into our platform watching how societies sometimes are being affected by natural disasters in a harsh way but in the best case scenario we have identified data points that avoided that natural catastrophe by identifying drop before it became a wildfire or identifying high water levels before it became a flooding yeah just the power of technology and it's it's being applied in the positive way that we do at Globy, the difference that can make. Very impressive and interesting. Let us now jump into the influence of mentorship and role models. Role models can consciously or subconsciously be a power force in our lives. In addition, mentors can guide us through our career journey and open up the world of possibilities. Helena, do you have a mentor today? 
I have many mentors actually. From pretty early on, I've been lucky to be surrounded by mentors and today they are present both as advisory boards at Globe and they are also part of our investors, are great mentors to me as well. I really have been lucky in finding people around me who have dedicated their time toward sharing their journeys with me and also help me avoid doing some mistakes that they've made. Sometimes you have to make the mistakes yourself, but in the best case scenario, you manage to navigate away from some of them. I will definitely recommend anyone that if you meet someone who you look up to, who you think is inspiring, ask for their help. You'll be surprised with how many people who are willing to dedicate their time to help future entrepreneurs succeed. Who is the female role model you look up to in your field? There are so many, but in the Swedish tech scene, I would say Binette Sek. I think she's doing a fantastic job in democratizing tech and making sure that we diversify the pool of entrepreneurs who are starting companies so that we can make sure that entrepreneurship and technology is being developed to actually tackle and fit the needs of all of us and not just fit the needs of few. She's doing a brilliant job in that aspect. History shows that it has been more common for men having mentors and role models in business than women. So Helena, how important do you think is to have a role model and mentor during one's career? I think it's super important, both in terms of actually being able to get hands-on and concrete advice, but also for someone to keep encouraging you. And if that mentor also is like you or share some similarities with you, I think it's a proof to yourself that you as a woman or you as a diverse background can also make it big because your mentor and your role model has kind of created that path and elbowed his or her way forward for the next generation to follow. Let's move on to leadership. Shirley Sandberg, CEO of Facebook said, I quote, leadership is about making others as a result of your presence and making sure that the impact lasts in your absence. Helena, what does leadership mean to you? I think leadership comes down to motivating and inspiring. And yeah, if you can motivate the people that you work with, if you can motivate them to the company vision and to really truly become part of something bigger and to believe in that, then you will have very high chances to succeed as a leader. What do you consider a good versus a bad leader? I consider a good leader to lead by example, to truly give concrete examples of small to big scenarios and not just expecting everyone else to dig in and do the hard work, but to roll up the sleeves and show by example. I would say that bad leadership would be the opposite. And a bad leader is usually someone who's really good at pointing out the weaknesses amongst the team members instead of showing the strength. Who is your favorite female tech leader and why? There are a lot of them today, which is fantastic. I would say Melanie Perkins, who's the founder behind Canva, definitely one of the young female entrepreneurs who got no from over 100 investors, but still made it big with a unicorn status company today, which is also a fantastic product being used at Globy previously. She's doing a fantastic job. How would you describe yourself as a leader? I am good at getting people motivated. I'm good at inspiring people. I'm good at seeing the bigger picture and having everyone else see it. I'm good at making sure that we are not afraid of failing, embracing failure as natural progress along the way, which means that hopefully more people dare to try and dare to fail. Because if you're going to do something for the first time and you're truly going to revolutionize something, you're going to have to fail along the way. And you're going to have to try to make failure as comfortable as possible, even though it's sometimes hard. And as a leader, what values are most important to you? Trust. You have to be able to trust your team and they have to be able to trust you. If there is no trust present, it's tough to do anything else. What leadership lessons have you learned that have formed you into the leader you are today? so many and you learn as you go but one things that are sending out is the importance of communication communication is so key and we all communicate very differently at globe we have a diverse team we cover different cultures different backgrounds we also work a lot online you really have to make sure when you communicate a message that you repeat it more than once and you repeat it in different ways you mix verbal with written and you have to really work at communication and it's sometimes tough but it's very key what are your three strengths and three weaknesses they tend to sometimes be maybe the same. Impatience is definitely a strength when it's being used in the sense that Globy is pushing for drones to be used in any way and be a tool to create something positive. It's not so great when you're stuck in lengthy processes when things take time. You obviously need to be patient. Patience can both have a good side and a bad side to it. And I have them both. I hate losing, like we talked about before. Being used in the best way, it's a great inspiration to keep going and to pick yourself up when things do not go the way you wanted. But 
obviously sometimes that also brings the frustration, which can sometimes be hard to deal with as an entrepreneur. I think there are very few times when I've actually let a no be a, a definite no, which has in many times been good. But maybe sometimes I'm putting myself into challenges that are hard to overcome. But uh, that is also part of the journey if you're going to succeed eventually. Let us now jump into the hottest topic in business today, workplace culture, unlocking the power of diversity, quality, inclusion, and belonging. Helena, what do diversity, quality, inclusion, and belonging mean to you personally? It comes down to a lot to representation, that we are a diverse group of people behind what we do. So at Globy, if we're going to be the global company solving global challenges with data from drones, then for me, it's a natural consequence that we need to have a global representation in everything that we do. Diversity to me is really representation, making sure that we have a great representation from all backgrounds and from all genders and different type of people involved in solving the challenges that we are facing so that we have solutions that fit all and not just a few. What do you consider being three to five signs of good company culture? Freedom with responsibility, for sure. No one likes to not be given freedom, but it also doesn't work if it's not attached with responsibility. Everyone truly caring and believing in the company vision. That's super key. And the allowance to be able to fail so that we can grow and learn from failures. As a woman, what has been the most significant barrier in your career and how have you overcome these challenges? Starting off in the drone industry, I was pretty much always the only woman in the room. If it was not me, it was one more. You had to prove yourself first before you were taken serious to a larger extent than I experienced male colleagues having had to do. So that has been the challenge. But on the flip side, you've also got more attention because you were a minority, which has resulted also in my great exposure and a lot of PR opportunities. Definitely not just the challenge to be a woman in tech it comes with a lot of opportunities as well. Why, why do you think it's important for more women to join the tech industry, especially as leaders? First of all, we are half of the population. If women are not present in tech, then we're going to have tech solutions that continue to come forward that are not suited for women. Everything from the seat belt being designed for men and not protecting women as well to less crucial things. It all starts with representation again. We have to be present to make sure that solutions are fitting ourselves as well. So that one for sure. And besides of that, there's a lot of research that shows that female leadership also brings higher revenue to business. I'm surprised with the negative figures that we are seeing when it comes to venture capitalist funding. That's mind blowing to me. Last, I would say that female funded companies when statistics actually show on the opposite. Women in tech are also great role models for future generations. We need to show our faces for future girls to join the industry. If you see someone who looks like you, then you might be more likely to dare to take the step into a field that is still largely male dominated. Do you and how do you speak with your female and male employees and colleagues about diversity, equality, inclusion challenges, especially salary gaps? Absolutely. We actually speak a lot on the topics of both diversity and equal pay. And at the same time, it's a hard subject. And I think that it also sometimes creates a bit of a catch 22 because Salary usually comes with experience, or at least many times salary is attached to experience. And women don't always tend to be given the same opportunity to get that experience. It is definitely a catch-22 at times, which is challenging to overcome sometimes. There are many public and internal discussions about the barriers women face from reaching high position in the tech industry and getting those kind of skills and experiences. How do you feel it has affected and is affecting you? And what is your advice on how to best unlock these roadblocks? Definitely. There are so many women out there who have pushed their way through breaking up the boys club, so to say. So we have a lot to thank them for that. But at the same time, we see women blocking other women too. So blame the boys club, so to say. But I think one of the keys to help unblock these roadblocks is to really have a broader definition of tech. The definition of what tech is has been hijacked by white middle-aged men based on what they think that tech is and that tech should be. But tech is so much more diverse than that. So to help break that barrier, I think that we can also overcome a lot of the challenges that we see within the tech industry today. As the tech industry finds it hard to especially retain women, what is your best advice on strategies for how companies can work to build a stronger corporate culture that engages gender diversity and equality? We tend to see that women care more about technology when technology is actually being used to change things in societies or being used in creative industry. But of course, we have women that do not fit that scope as well. So again, I think it's a broader definition of what tech is. And once we do that, we will find and we will be able to retain much more women in the tech industry as well. What would you say are the few challenges of implementing diversity, quality, inclusion and belonging culture in a workplace today? 
Working remotely sometimes make it harder to see if you have truly succeeded with that or not. In general, I think the key is to foster a feeling of open communication, both regarding what's currently working within the company and what's not working. Why and how do you think companies would benefit from having workplace gender diversity and equality, especially better gender representation at sea level? Most research shows that businesses that are led by female leaders, they generate better business results. To me, it should be a no-brainer. How much do you think the industry has changed regarding this subject since you joined? A lot, but too slowly. In the drone industry, you know, when I started, it was just me and one more person, pretty much. And I saw numbers that in 2019, there were 7% in the drone industry. So maybe we have reached 10% of women in the drone industry today. I would like to think it's slightly more, but I'm afraid we might not have come much farther. So definitely going in the right direction. Luckily, we see bigger changes in tech overall. The drone industry is a bit more behind there, but we're seeing the right development. Going too slow. Looking back on your career, what one thing would you have changed in your working environment to break the bias? That's a very good question. I honestly think that I've been doing a decent job at it, but I think the most important thing is to not get satisfied. You cannot think that, oh, we did a pretty good job at Globe and I value these type of questions. And then you stop working at it because then you're going to not be successful. So I think what you need to really do is to always keep working on it and never get satisfied and constantly improve. And looking forward, what will you do as a leader to improve the bias for the next generation of women in tech? I am out speaking a lot at schools and different events to just showcase that, showing my face sometimes, as simple as that, and showcase that there is different paths into technology than the traditional one and by the traditional face. I think that helps out a lot. So trying to be a role model and trying to help out girls who want to join the drone industry and the tech industry with what I can. As everything, time is usually a challenge, but when the time allows, that's what I really try to contribute to as well. Amazing. Let us move on to another hot topic in business today, which is workplace life balance and mental health. Helena, you have without a doubt a busy lifestyle. How do you take care of yourself to maintain a good mental health? I'm not sure I will have succeeded on it. It is a challenge and you definitely, you have to work on it. I'm better at it now. There is definitely a value in making sure that you get different types of rest. You sometimes just need the rest from the screens during weekends, make sure that you spend time outdoors, make sure that you're not constantly connected to your phone or your computer or your emails. Separate yourself from technology and make sure that you surround yourself with people that truly gives you that energy. So when you have your free time, that you truly recharge those batteries and ideally not in front of your computer or not in front of a lot of tech gadgets, but ideally more outdoors or just doing something completely different that gets your mind off work and gets your mind onto something else. Have you ever experienced burnout? I have. I have been fortunate to not experience the true effects of burnout. So not fully hitting the wall, but definitely being close to the wall a few times and banging my head against it. It's something that we definitely all have to speak about more openly because it's so much more common than you think. And if we all share our experiences and dare to speak about it, hopefully we can together make it less taboo and hopefully eventually less common. What motivates you every day to get out of bed? It's the fact that I'm not just running a company, I'm running a movement of change. And it's just truly inspiring to see that at Globe today, we've been part of impacting over 31 million people's lives and their surrounding environments. So to get you out of bed and go to work, it's many days not so challenging. Of course, we have the challenging days at Globe as well. They're present in the company, but at the core, it really motivates me what we do. So getting out of that bed, it's very seldom hard. What is your advice on how companies can create a more mentally healthy workplace in the new now? To set aside time for it. It's so important that we just focus on the work that needs to get done. And that's a very short term solution to reaching success. So to make sure that you dedicate time to all have fun, which is sometimes hard when you everyone are busy, but to make sure that you dedicate those time slots for some fun activities as well. Now, let us wrap up with a few words of wisdom and piece of advice for our listeners. Helena. What is the best piece of advice you've been given that has helped you during setbacks in your role and career? I think what you just have to sometimes do is to be able to allow yourself to take a step back and look at the longer picture. I tend to very much look at the present and look at all the challenges that are currently ahead of me. And then you tend to be very frustrating. So the advice then that I've been getting is to take a step back and take a bird eye view, look on things and actually appreciate how far you've come since you got started. And I think that's a very good advice for many people that tend to be so focused on the current scenario that we forget the longer perspective and the great things that have happened along the way. And then what is the worst advice you've ever been given and how did you tackle that? 
that I should lessen my ambitions. I tend to have extremely high ambitions and very hard on myself on that. And I don't like to be told that they're too ambitious. I think you have to be ambitious if you can't change things. Is there something you wish you would have known or a skill you wish you had when starting out in the tech industry? I think it would have been good to know that from the start. I know that now, but a lot of people that work in the tech industry actually don't have a background in tech. And you actually see some of the most successful tech companies out there today have been founded by non-tech background founders. And I think that is very true at times that you can truly it from the outside when you come into something. But of course, you're going to have to find the people along the way that also knows the tech component and what you want to do if that's the case for you. If you had the ability to go back in time when we're just the beginning of your career, what advice would you give to your younger self? Not compare yourself to others. It's so easy to say now once you're old, but as a child and already when you're younger, it's so easy to just compare yourself to others. But if you start to try to compare you to you more, then that's when you truly can learn and grow instead of just trying to compare yourself to others all the time. What advice would you give to young girls and women wanting and trying to break into STEM fields today, especially wanting to become the next generation leaders? Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. It's as simple as that. Don't listen to the naysayers. And if you bump into a lot of naysayers, then keep going until you find the yesayers. Last but not least, Helena, what is next for you in your role and for Globe? What are your career aspirations and the aspiration with Globe next? We have the goal to impact over 3.2 billion people by 2030. We have a pretty busy agenda ahead of us. So we're going to make sure that we are present in at least half of the world's countries and that our drones are out there flying as much as possible, collect data that can make a difference. And um, then we'll take it from there. Helena, thank you so much for being a guest on the Queens of Tech podcast. Sharing your journey will without doubt inspire change and reshape company culture for the next generation of women in tech. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you for listening. If you have worked in the tech industry a minimum of three years and would like to share your journey, please nominate yourself or somebody you know to i at jasminemoradi.com. For more podcast episodes and to learn more about the Queens of Tech initiative and to support us, visit queensof.tech.